Would you grab your swords, please? Thank you, Master. Would you turn to somewhere? Matthew 7. Let's start at 13. Enter by the what? Narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Many. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He said there's a lot of them that are going in this wide of destruction. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. So he didn't say it was going to be, you know, easy. He said it's going to be difficult. But he wouldn't leave us unpowered not to go through the difficult times. He wouldn't leave us without tools and weapons to go through it. Beware of false prophets. Now he's warning us, be careful of the things that you hear or listen to or partake of. Who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits, their desires, and their reactions. Do men gather grapes and thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Now, a tree represents a human spirit or a spirit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them, or by their desires. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So there was a form of godliness. They were used in God's name and in his power because at one time they were right, but then they had drifted. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock, solid foundation, or on the anointing. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock or the anointing. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his, hand, his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Many are falling away from the grace, God's plan. They're falling away from grace, God's plan. Remember, grace is God's plan, amen, to escape. They're not building on his words of promise, but they're building on their own words of desire. This is called sinking sand. Sinking sand. I've had multiple visions lately about what's happening and what's going to happen and so forth, and I wanted to do a quick little teaching before we release the word of 2023. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Verse 9. Remember, though there are those who are building on his promises and those who are building on their own desires. Amen? For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, and wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will be clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work, or what sort it is. If anyone's work, which he has built on, endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he, he himself will be saved, yet as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. 
For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. In other words, defiling the temple, if you're willing to defile your temple, God will allow it to happen where it will destroy you. It says building on his foundation. In other words, we're to build on his foundation from the eternal realm and true reality. Not with the temporary tools that promote false reality. Does everybody get it? We don't build on riches. We build on what God says. Many people, that's why he said, if you're building on gold and this and that and whatever, and he said, that's not going to last. See, the world builds on things of sinking sand. We build on the things of the foundation. The foundation takes a building. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in verse 1, So what are temporary tools? Gold, silver, these are all temporary. Money, you know, thing, all of these things. Even the internet is temporary. Google's definitely temporary. <laughs> Verse 1, let's speak it together. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by the spirit or by word or by letter, as it, if, if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshiped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that is, he is God. Do you not remember when I was still with you that I told you these things? See, the falling away is falling from truth. It's a falling from following the Lord. And one of the things that the enemy loves to do is bring an area of justification. Many people are falling away. Why? Because they're stepping into sinking sand. They're not building according to the ways of the Lord. They're building according to their desires and needs. Falling away from following the truth. The justification, remember this, justification produces compromise. So the first thing the enemy would try to do is bring justification. Why? He knows if you can justify, it will bring it to compromise. Compromise produces the falling away. When an individual begins to compromise, they begin to actually drift and fall away. They fall away from their, sometimes, look at, here's a simple t falling away from their personal goals. Amen? Look at them, how does it start? Justification, compromise, and then falling away. Justification, compromise, and falling away. People falling away from their personal goals of maintaining good health, maintaining a healthy temple, giving more time and in in expanding the kingdom. How about kingdom goals? How about completing assignments? Being more available. Right now we're seeing a global falling away. There's a global falling away. Much of the world is falling into sinking sand. At every corner of decision, you will be met by three influences. Your flesh, your fleshly desires, your soul of desire, and a demonic spirit of influence. What are they there to do? Promote self-justification, compromise, to get you to fall away. Every decision and choice you come to, you'll be met by three areas, three influences. Your flesh, your soul, which is associated with how you feel and your emotions, your mind, your thoughts. And a demonic spirit that's trying to influence you. What's he trying to do? Get you to justify, compromise, and flow, fall away. Think about how many times you were gung-ho. You know how many, how many people are going to show up in the gym tomorrow? Or they showed up today? Yes. There are New Year's resolutions. I'm not going to eat this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to tithe more. I'm going to give more. I'm going to do this. I'm going to ay ay yay, yay, yay. They might last two or three weeks. And 
Gym is emptied again. <laughs> and people are back doing the same old thing. Why? Because they are met by three influences. Flesh of desire, your soul of desire, and a spirit. Amen. To cause you to what? Justify, compromise, and fall away and drift. The enemy's not stupid. He's been doing it for a long time. But we have the anointing in the spirit to outwit him. If you're connected, if you're in tune. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 10, and verse 32. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me and my chains and joy joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, or you completed that assignment without justification and compromise and fall away, you may receive the what? See, the powers of darkness know this. And that's why they love to meet you with decisions. Why? Because your decisions are either promoting your assignment or nullifying your assignments. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe in the saving of the soul. Completing assignments and vows, then the promises are released. Amen. But again, you will be met because even in those assignments that God has given us to do, no matter what it is, there are multiple things to make choices of. And you will be met to try to distract you, to cause you to drift, to cause you to step in sinking sand. Amen? In Ephesians chapter 4, 17. Speak it. This I say, therefore in testifying the Lord, they should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind or their thinking. Having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, having given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not learned Christ. Many fall into sinking sand because they have not learned Christ. In other words, they've not learned his ways. They've not stood on his promises. They've drifted into justification, compromise, and the falling away. But you've not learned the ways of Christ's life, nor been disciplined. You know, Christ's life was disciplined. He endured, fellowshiped, the power, the presence of God. You've not learned Christ. If you had been, if you've heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts or desires. And be renewed in the spirit of your thinking, your mind, that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and what? And holiness. Therefore put it away lying. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil let him who stole steal no longer but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is in need let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers and do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption let all bitterness wrath anger clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, 
tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Not learned Christ's ways of life, not been disciplined enough, endurance, fellowship of his presence and power and truth, which is the anointing. Hmm? Not building the foundation on his promises. We have entered a year of crossover into a year of promises of God, a new reality with a reset of all political, governmental, medical, education, media, financial, and positional authority. God is resetting everything. He's doing these, and he's going to put these individuals, those who are using the building blocks of wisdom, discernment, and understanding from the eternal reality and not from the temporary. He will use them in a mighty way. In Isaiah 51, verse 9, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Are you not the arm that cut Rahab apart and wounded the serpent? Are you not the one who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, that made the depths of the sea a road for the who? Redeemed to what? Cross over. Ooh. So the ransom of the Lord has returned and, the, and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The crossover for the redeemed. Why? By cooperation and obedience. Amen. In Philippians 3, verse 13. Speak it, brethren, I do not count myself as to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things which are what? Ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as mature or have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same way of thinking. Amen. We press on toward the call and purpose and destiny that God has set before us. We are building bridges over sinking sands. These sinking sands are sands of deception. And overcoming the obstacles of self-justification compromise and the following of truth, maintaining a hope and a disciplined life in everything that we do. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, now the what? The Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. These individuals are unable to recognize the unseen influence. They have fallen into seek the sinking sand of deception. It is the sinking sand of deception. And Revelation chapter 12. They will sink with their riches, their wealth, their false promises, their structures, their statutes, their idols, they will sink. Revelation 12, 12, verse 13. Hallelujah. Now when a dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of the great eagle, 
that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where it is nourished for time and time and a half and half time for the present from the presence of the serpent which is three and a half years for the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood but the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth uh, I would say like sinking sand and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth sinking sands are set for the wicked not the obedient righteous does everybody get it they're set for the wicked but not for the obedient righteous the problem is is because many of the righteous have compromised or justified and complacent and so forth and they're not, no, no longer building because they're to be building bridges over these things you can't build a bridge over sinking sand and let us unless it's built from the eternal not from the physical so many times people are building things from the physical expecting something eternal to happen it doesn't work that way we build on the eternal things amen and then things in the physical will come to pass I'm gonna close at Romans 8 18 For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be what? Compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? We are. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. This is where the transition is happening now. We know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does, why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit who helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or understood. That means praying in tongues. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also what? Called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also what? Glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? What shall we bring? Uh, what, who shall bring a charge against God's elected? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor hell nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Powerful. Very powerful. And this is the word of the Lord that came to me for 2023. Now, um, 
it, he said, this is my witness of my love and power. All right? Something the Lord sh shared with me this morning, because I was asking him why something hadn't come to pass yet. And I've been decreeing it before the end of the year. He said, well, the end of the year is not over. He said, you're looking according to the world year. There's a difference. Does everybody get it? See, our new year already began in September on the Feast of Trumpets. That's our year. So we have to begin to refocus on certain things. But anyways, this is the word. He says, unless I build a house, you will labor in vain. I release my wisdom, discernment, and understanding as the building tools to my people in the second world win of judgment. Now, remember that you might have heard already that there's three whirlwinds. The first whirlwind comes and exposes and rips off and, the, the, and exposes everything. It's ripping off tops and so forth. These are visions. The second whirlwind comes with strategies, provisions, and stool, tools and um, weapons and things to that degree. So he said, unless I build a house, you will labor in vain. I have released my wisdom, discernment, and understanding as the building tools of my people in the second whirlwind of judgment. In contrast, the first whirlwind of exposure continues to increase in power and expands its infiltration. As I instructed Noah to build an ark of escape to cross over, I have also instructed you to build according to my ways and plans and not according to your desires and needs. Those obedient to my commands have built bridges over the sinking sands of deception, crossing over to the true reality of time, place, position, prosperity, and identity. Those faithful with a little be entrusted with more. I am releasing the second mantle from the early and latter rain to divide the natural and the spiritual walkways to those I have decreed worthy of my rescue. In other words, be, so we'll have access to them. Those that have used my kingdom tools of wisdom, discernment, and understanding will build not only crossover bridges, but witty inventions, creating prosperity for my people with health and wealth. Impostors of my righteousness will increase to deceive, and the haters of holiness will stumble in their darkness. You have entered the seven years of plenty with one year of rest to glean from your labor before my next transformation of the earth and the world of inhabitants. And Daniel 12, 9 and 10, he said, The angel of the Lord spoke with Daniel, and after revealing deep revelations that many would be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand. Still, the wise shall understand the times and seasons of what's going on. In Psalm 37, uh, and so he said, um, make sure that to keep your lamps lit with fresh oil and be wise, not like the foolish who have lost their oil. Psalm 37 and 34 through 40, it says, Wait on the Lord, keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man. You will be marked. And observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked will be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in a time of trouble. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Nothing can stop what I'm doing, says the Lord. Nothing. Amen? Very powerful. And this is the word of the Lord, the crossover. We have entered the year of crossover. We've been in it, actually, since September. Amen? Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word and for your promises of covenant. We thank you for your warnings and teachings, Lord, that we may not step into the sinking sand of deception, but that we would use your 
eternal tools with wisdom and discernment and understanding to overcome any kind of self-justification or compromise or any fallen away of deceptive and deceiving spirits. Lord, we need more of you and less of us. We are dependent on you, and we know we can do nothing without you. So let your mercies and grace abound abundantly in this time, in this time of season, in this time of trial, in this time of crossover, that your name would be glorified in every victory we get in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. Thank you.